What's going on guys? You know who it is. It's Jay Chaos. Today with the long overdue Donna Guy. So without further ado, let's get straight into this video. I have a lot to bring to the table. I am going to be going very quickly just because there's a lot to talk about and I'm going to be going extremely in depth. Um, and I wanted to make sure I got this character down to the T that I did my homework. So that way what I am saying is valid and yeah um thank you guys for watching this video uh if you like the video like subscribe comment share it with someone who also wants to learn donna without further ado let's get straight into it it's jay chaos let's get it So let's try to go quickly over all of the basics. Um, basically, all of this, as far as awakening skills, it's really, really simple. Everything is basically damaged. They didn't give any sort of like thought process to her having anything like cool down or I don't know, MP something, anything, you know, anything other than damage. Now, basically, since SP is not a problem, you never put SP for any of these or break off or anything like that. Always just go for increased damage. It's literally the only thing. There's nothing like crazy about it. Uh, as far as like combos, she has a left, right. And she has a left, left, right. And she has a left, left, right, right. And she has a left, 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 right. And she has a left, 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 right, right. And at any point in time, uh, you have a curse breaker, which is something that you can do in your second combo string and then your third combo string, which would look something like left, left, right, tab, or left, 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 and then like that. So yeah, that is pretty much the basics of Donna. Um, in your curse breaker, you have iframes. In your ritual of ending, you have iframes. Anytime you do your tab and you hit your right click, you have some iframes. All of that stuff allows for you to have some iframes. These are pretty much like the basics. If you played the character, then it's pretty like self-explanatory. So let's talk about some of the SP skills really quick. Okay, so getting into SP skills. So uh, Penitent Slash is something that gives you back MP and it also does pretty good DPS. Um, you have Morning, uh, I just call it Tornado. It gives you uh, actually also some really nice DPS. Uh, but um, it's mainly used for getting back MP. This gives you back 69 MP. This gives you back 90 MP. Uh, Purify Evil, if you do all three hits, you get back 81 MP. If you do the first one, you get 23. But after that, 23 is... Yeah, so basically what this means is you only really want to use the last one. And every single hit on top of it giving you MP, <clears throat> the first hit gives you 45 stamina. The second hit gives you 45 stamina. And the last hit gives you 60 stamina so this is a good move you want to use it every single time that you need stamina um this is your hold um it actually has true iframes which means if you use it and the unblockable is coming your way you can actually use it to get out of uh, certain attacks uh that are unblockable so that's really really cool um also i didn't mention it but uh the penitent slash can actually jump over certain aoe's not all of them, but it happens quite a lot. So just keep that in mind that, hey, if an AOE is coming and you want to risk it, uh, try to jump over it with Penitent Slash. It's happened so many times. I don't know if that's a bug or if that's intended, but nevertheless, it's still a pretty cool trick. Um, then Ritual of Ending. This move gives you iframes for the length of the hold animation. So it's really, really good. And it also gives you back 193 MP. So it's a really, really good move. So I would actually use it pretty much every time it's off a of cooldown because it hits really, really hard. But um, use it whenever you need the MP because Donna is a character that's really not based off of damage. She's based off of resources. If you need the resource, that's whenever you really want to pop it. But since you always need resources, you always want to pop this off a of cooldown because your chances are you're, if you're playing her optimally, you're going to need the MP anyway. Now, uh, I'll talk about artifacts in a quick second. All right, so with artifacts, so there's really not that much that you can do since I'll, I'll just kind of break it. This is the beginner portion of the video. Donna is a very, very new friendly character. She's a face tank character. Um, she's not a character that really benefits from bl blocking the boss pretty much at all. You get no reward. You actually get less DPS, less SP, less mana, and you use more stamina. So it's like 
What's the reward for blocking the boss? You don't have one. So with that being said, she's a very, very face tank character, which means she's not really exactly in a good spot, in my opinion, because I don't like face tank characters. But um, one other thing about Donna is that artifacts are something that is very, very important to her gameplay. But because of the way her kit is, it's like, there really is no good artifact for her right now except succubus fang because she is a face tank character um the problem with werewolf paw is that and i'll go over this in the advance so stick stay in tune uh for that but the problem with the werewolf paw is that it gives you an attack speed for a long time 20 seconds to be exact and i'll go over why that 20 seconds is important and the reason why you it's really not worth it but um Warworld Paw is one of those things where Donna doesn't have a kit that can actually support any further DPS than what she, her kit can handle. Since everything that you need to do in order to keep a high DPS is locked behind certain attack speeds, um, going above that threshold by a lot and then for a long period of time, yes, you might be able to get more damage in for a quick moment, but the point still stands that Donna cannot support those dps numbers because she's a resource character you don't have the resources you can't attack you can't do high dpm moves so if you are spamming world paul or if you're looking for an artifact i would recommend right now for her current state because she can't support her resources can't support werewolf paw or especially greater werewolf paw i would not recommend those because her kit right now cannot support the amount of damage and the amount of stamina that you need to do it and the amount of sp well not sp the amount of mp that you need in order to do that her kit just can't support it right now however it is nice to have if you already have it sure but just know that you're going to be if if you're trying to use it and make it work you're going to have to spam a lot of resource rotations in the middle of it which means you pretty much you're better off just not using it now the problem is mysterious cat statue isn't all that great either because of the fact that donna really doesn't have sp problems sp it's slow to build but if you're doing optimal rotations then you always are going to have sp sp is one of those things that you really never since your cooldowns are really really lengthy um you really and you don't have that many skills you really don't need sp sp is not one of those things that you need a lot of if you're playing the character properly so having a mysterious cat set you doesn't really do anything for you you don't need sp and that's why i say if you're going to go for an artifact right now with donna i would say go for succubus fame because that means you could actually face tank and not have to worry about popping hp potions and you could just sit in the boss's face and then use that in order to actually get some dps in so if you're going for an artifact i would recommend succubus fame um because the highest dpm that you can have on donna means that the boss doesn't attack you because she gets no reward whatsoever for actually blocking. Um, so yeah, that's what I would have to say about artifacts. All right, and now since we got all of that stuff out of the way, I just want to talk about what she can do, some tip and tricks, uh, tips and tricks that I have found for her, some things that you need to know, some things that are not well known, some things that are not common knowledge, but nevertheless stuff that you need to know if you're going to be maining Donna. So with that being said, first thing, you can't animation cancel anything with block or dodge except the last smash in your second and third combo string. So what does that mean? That means if you were to do this, this last smash, after you input in your right click, you can cancel it with space bar. But the, ti the timing is very tight. So if you do it later, you will not be able to cancel it. And it'll just do the animation after. So you have to be very, very careful with the last combo, which is your third combo. But your second combo, which is this, that one is very very generous you can pretty much do it whenever you want so yeah you can do it while you're doing the first after the second it's up to you so this is really good because I, whenever we start talking about optimal donna dps you're going to realize just how good that move is compared to like a curse breaker or other stuff like that so yeah um that is really important to know because that is the only time you can actually animation cancel with block or dodge in her kit the only other way for you to animation cancel with donna is for you to actually do your curse break which is anytime you do anything and you just immediately cancel it with that now i have exactly 70 mp right now so i'll do it one more time and 
you can animation cancel it before an attack hits, or you can animation cancel it right after your attack hits. So I'll do one that hit, hits before it. And that's what that'll look like. So um, that's the only way that you can really animation cancel with Donna is whenever you input a smash in in your second or third combo string and you immediately hit tab whenever you want and it'll just cancel out whatever animation you're in. So that's really, really important to know. So what does that mean for Donna? That means Donna is a character where you have to commit to everything that you press because once you press it, you're stuck. Which is the reason why everyone just fishes for this everyone fishes for this because they know hey if a boss attacks me at least i'll be able to react so yeah um that's really really cool all right now let's talk about donna's block so donna has one of the best blocks in the game actually and i'll show it to you so basically um i've played pretty much every character in this game except delia and lon and I felt pretty much what all of their damage numbers and their power and all of that stuff feels like. And I felt what their blocks or their defensive mechanics feel like. And I can say that Donna has one of the best blocks in the game. It's very lengthy. And as you can see, don't trust that little blue little thing that you see. That's not how quick it is. No, Donna can block from the startup of this move, which means the moment that you touch it all the way until her hand goes all the way back, which means the moment that the hand starts going forward, that's when you start losing block frames, which means you can like block all, all of that is block frames. All of that block frames. So you have a really generous block and I've never run into block bugs or anything like that. And since you can block immediately into your tab, which is the most important thing, it's actually really, really good. So she has a really, really nice block. Now let's start talking about some defensive options that Donna has and I'll go over like what's optimal and what's not uh, in the later portion because this is still kind of the beginning side of the of her. Um, Donna can do dodge uh, block. This is really good as far as OSing a boss which means you're like basically you don't know the boss's patterns but you want to be able to survive. This is really good. It's imp it's dang near impossible for the boss to hit you because there's just a little gap where the boss can hit you in between those two where he can actually do some damage to you. But for the most part, if you do this, you're safe. There's literally nothing, no OKO, nothing that any boss does that they can do that can hit you if you're spamming this. This is like super, super safe, all right? The only problem is you're burning 21 stamina every time you do it. So it's not good and it's not optimal, especially because you're not getting any DPS. So what's another way? Another way is to do block light, block light, block light. This is what I see a lot of people doing, right? However, again, it's not optimal. That's actually really, really bad for you because you're running into the exact same problem, which is you're doing a block, which is gonna cost you 10 stamina, and then you're doing a light, which doesn't cost you any stamina, but then you have to block again to get two iframes. Because the point is, you need two iframes to OS, right? Or, so if you wanna like be cheesy, you could do that if you don't know the boss's patterns. But nevertheless, you're still losing the exact same amount of stamina that you would be if you're doing this, except you're just losing one more if you do this one even though this one is much more safer so this is not good also but technically it is better than doing this because this you don't get any damage from now let's talk about the actual good ways to block on donna so those two yes you can do them but i would literally recommend you never do those so one of the other ways is this you do this and you do tab and since tab actually hits for damage makes it a good move so yeah this is the best way to block because you can actually repeat this over and over again so yeah but he's not really trying to bing 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 yeah okay yeah he's just not trying to do it but you get the picture um you can basically you can repeat this process over and over again and just do space tab space tab space tab and this is good because you're only burning 10 stamina for two blocks. And whenever we start talking about damage and all of that, you'll realize that this is actually better than doing this. Than doing that. So yeah, this is really, really good. Now, another way for you to defend yourself, which is the best way, the most optimal way, Donna is not a block character. Even though she has one of the best blocks in the game, she gets no reward for it. So you really don't want to do it. However, 
who she is she's a dodge character which means if you dodge you have access to this smash now this smash it's really really nicely for what it is and how quick it is and since you can spam it over and over again and it gives you back 11 to uh, 12 stamina now technically it gives you 20 stamina technically but since you have to actually spend um you have to actually spend 11 stamina with your dodge in order to get to this move you're only getting 11 stamina back and this is take into account the amount that you get back from berserk so everything that i say as far as like stamina regeneration and stuff like that i'm taking into account the berserk or enchant scroll that you should have if you're playing the game um so yeah that is it's like it's a good move because it's giving you stamina back which is really awesome for a really quick attack but the fact that you have an iframe uh right or a dodge frame right before is really really nice and since you can delay this attack this is really really good and her dodge is really really lengthy she has one of the best dodges in the game her dodge is super nice super super nice so yeah those are your defensive options with Gala. all right and so on to the next part which is aiming your attacks so with donna um you really have to get in the habit of aiming your attack so doing something like this doing that is really really important because that allows for you to micromanage your positioning which is what's really important so um that's really really good and same thing for your curse breaker i always aim it behind me just so that way i can um just so that way i can hold on why you better stop i'm not playing with you I always aim it behind me just so that way I can keep the positioning that I actually wanted. And if you can keep the position that you want, then that means you can actually control where the boss is, which is the most important thing. Because Donna's light attacks, they always hit sideways. They hit side, right? But her heavy attacks, her smash attacks, they all hit up and down or like straight forward, which means there's none of this like, there's none of that. You can't do that. So the only way for you to like micromanage your positioning and since our light attack is doing pretty good damage especially if you're looking at optimal defense you actually need to hit those um the only way for you to kind of like micromanage your positioning without it like making you whiff too much is to do it whenever you get to your curse breaker and then doing it to the side and micromanaging like that or doing it behind you since that hits behind you and same thing with fickle fate or if you do space tab rr so positioning with those abilities is really really important and you can even do it off of this one here if you want to to hit to the side if you're trying to again micromanage or if you're trying to predict where the boss is going to be so that's really important now i will say one thing you have to be careful with is if you throw your tab out number one you aren't using them. notice you aren't using any mp which means you can actually play a little bit of a range game like for example if valor is like running around on his horse you can do this now you're going to still burn a lot of stamina because you have to dodge in order to you know spam it like that however it is it's actually really nice and, and it can crit so that's the most important thing that attack can crit uh but it's also really good for like if a mob is really far away like an arrow guy or whatever and you just want to like kill the archer you just throw it out so that's a really really cool little neat little thing that you can do in order to play a little bit of a range game with her kit um now let's actually move on to like the deeper like in-depth stuff about donna's tab which is if you throw it out and you teleport to it you don't get the cooldown as you can see you aren't getting a cooldown right here but you will still lose the mp now if you press your right click you can actually get these two attacks that give you some stamina back but you have a cooldown now technically even though like that's like a thing that you can do i would recommend never actually doing tab tab always do tab r you get more iframes it's better for you and it's just you actually get really really good dps from it so there's no reason for you to waste your mp by just teleporting to the boss always 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 do your fickle fate version which is whenever you hit your right click so um that being said that's really cool to know but another thing to note about her tab is if you are if a boss is attacking you and you do space tab right your tab has to actually hit something for your right click to go to it which means if you did space tab and then you hit r 
but the tab didn't hit a boss or anything, you will not be able to teleport, which is where your iframes actually are for that animation, which means if you are not able to react in time and an AOE is coming or a one hit KO is coming and you cannot react, you're going to get hit. So you have to be very, very aware of if that tab hit or if it did not hit, because if that little RB button doesn't pop up, that means you're screwed. So if that does happen, what you do is you do space tab. And if it doesn't hit and you, after you hit right click, immediately hit space bar. And that's a way to save yourself from dying. So yeah, that's really, really important for her. You have to be very, very careful. All right. So let's talk about, um, SP skills. Uh, well, like, um, the recovery on these. So pin it, all of your SP skills have recovery every last single one of them the recovery is enough to where if you do it in an unsafe spot you will not be able to block dodge or do anything that is safe or something that gives you like the ability to protect yourself if you time these things wrong or if you put them in places where you don't know for a fact that you're going to be safe so with that being said you have to be careful with when you use these moves even though you have to use all of them every single time they're off of cooldown in the right times you have to make sure that you're using them properly because there's recovery after every last single one of them and even technically though that you can go straight into a light attack a light attack does not give you block frames which means you're you're actually going to have to be very careful with that so that being said that's really really important for her kid all right and the last thing that I want to talk about before I go into the in-depth stuff about Donna um, is delays which is Donna can delay so much. She's probably the best character for delays. Her delays are awesome. Now, because her delays are awesome, it kind of comes to a, a, a down. There's a downside to it. But um, nevertheless, she can delay everything that she throws out, which is really, really good. Now, um, I will mention some things after i talk about this portion but um there's one thing about her kit that is really really bad but i'll talk about that in a second but um like you have to get into the habit of delaying this for the actual attack itself so you can delay that so don't always just throw it out as soon as it comes out right um do it whenever you know you know for a fact that you can actually time it so try to time that for the boss so that way you can get a perfect block however the problem with delaying with donna is even if you do delay your fickle fate or whatever the boss mini bosses mainly the ones i'm talking about is the redeemers because that's all i really do in Vindy. it's the only thing that's really a challenge um redeemers all teleport and so if you perfect block, normally you perfect block and then they move out of the way of that attack. So sometimes you actually can't delay your fickle fate. So sometimes you have to actually do your fickle fate. But remember, fickle fate has some recovery at the end of it where you can't block and you can't dodge and you're vulnerable to an attack. If that happens in an OKO sequence, which is a one hit KO, by the way, um, you're screwed. If a uh, multi-hitting attack happens in between that gap you're screwed you're just gonna have to take the damage it's just the way she is right now you can't block or dodge immediately after you do that there's some recovery right there that is really 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 annoying especially if you play the character like solo wise if you're a casual it won't really affect you that much um but even with 94 attack speed this still is a big problem so yes um, delays is a very, very big part of her game, but just know that not, you don't want to always delay. Sometimes you actually need to like do the attack as soon as you can. So that way you can actually hit the boss and get the damage and get the stamina back, which is the most important part, even if it means you're going to suffer the hit, because that's, what's most important. All right. So now let's talk about a downside to Donna. I, I saved this for last because I'm about to go into the in-depth stuff. So I wanted to talk about this before I go into that, but uh, the biggest downside to Donna is that you are stuck. After you do this, if you try to do a light attack, you have to wait for that animation to finish. Even if you did this, you have to wait for this animation to finish before you can do another light attack. That is horrible. Even if you like tried to move, right? You have to wait quite a while before you can move again, right? 
See what I'm saying? You have to wait. There's a huge pause right there. You have to wait. And same thing with your Curse Breaker. If you did your Curse Breaker, right? There's a huge gap before you can move again. That is not good. That is horrible for her. Which means, like, it, it's god awful. Which means also, if you try to do a Fickle Fate, which is the thing that you want to do because that gives you stamina back, you can't do that after a Curse Breaker really fast. So I'm spamming Tab right now. Look at how long it takes for it to come out. That is horrible. That is god awful. That is the biggest downside to Donna. Especially if you're trying to, let's say you're in a combo, right? And you're in a stick situation and you need to get to the Fickle Fate. The only way for you to do that is to do a Curse Breaker and then to throw that out. But that's too slow. What you would have to do is you would have to do this, do a dodge this. Which means you would have to spend 21 stamina in order to get to a Fickle Fate at any point in time that you want to do it. And just completely in your rotation because you're very, very low on health. So keep that in mind. That Donna's biggest downside is that you have to sit through a lot of these animations. Now, after you do a Curse Breaker, after pretty much you do any SP skill that she does have, the good news is that you can animation counter with your Light Attack. But a Light Attack is not a block frame. But the fact that you can do it is pretty good. Like, you can do that. And this is pretty much how, like, she is played. And if you do that over and over again, you'll be good. After you do pretty much any sort of animation that she does, you can go immediately right back into your animation, right? So you do that, you can go crazy, right? So yeah, that's pretty much like how Donna works as far as like animation canceling. You pretty much can only animation cancel with your light attack after you do, uh, well, what? Not have to deal with the recovery, that long recovery with your light animations. But again, your light is not exactly good. Now you can do it with block after you do it, which is really cool you also can do it with dodge but again both of these things require for you to spend stamina and since stamina is the most valuable resource that you need to upkeep it's not good so that's a huge downside to her kid all right so with all of that being said let's move on to the advanced portion of this video if you aren't looking to really solo then everything that i'm about to say is really not going to be that important to you because donna is super simple and super brain dead in certain instances of like what is optimal Basically, I can go ahead and let you know right now. If you want to know what's optimal, do this, do that, and do this. That's it. That's pretty much it. So, yeah, that's pretty much everything that you need to know about Tonic if you're looking for a really dry, dead bones, like don't have any like thing going forward and you're not really worried about it and just stop attacking whenever you're, you know, low on stamina or mana or whatever. So, yeah, um, thank you guys for watching the video if you're leaving at this point. And now I am going to get directly straight into all of this for the people who are sticking around so yeah let's just hop straight into it so um before i get into all of this let me go ahead and explain this um this chart really quick that i made so i did these damage calculation on bull this is what my stats were this is the sp skills this is the damage that it does this is the crit damage finish combo crit combo i'll explain what that means in a second so again same thing here this is the attack um this is uh basically how much damage it would do notice how the lights don't have anything in the crit because lights can't crit um and notice how uh, the light doesn't have anything in finish combo because it's just one attack uh same thing here nothing in finish combo because it's just one attack uh obviously this here is just going to be the estimated time with 94 attack speed um I didn't put it in everything just because not every attack it's really important because you're really only going to be spamming the main things and that's really what you're going to be doing even if you're playing uh the character in a non-optimal way you're still going to be spamming mainly these attacks or these patterns pretty much so um as far as finish combo and finish crit combo so basically uh this means like okay so this number how did i get this number? that means i added in the total of this number this number along with this number to give me this now if this crit then it's this number so finish combo crit is basically if everything crit in your combo if you got to that part of the combo this means nothing crit and this is how much damage you would have done so um let's say if you did first light second light third smash uh second to third smash so you got both of these hits tab and that this is how much damage you would have done if all of that stuff hit the boss and you miss nothing so that's pretty much how you go about 
this what this means now same thing here this means that the first light the second light the third light and then all of these attacks hit not everything on top of that but just the first light second light third light with the fourth smash second fourth smash tap and second hit tap that's how much damage you would do guaranteed no matter what if you have 100 balance so yeah this is basically used for me to calculate dps and that's pretty much what this means and yeah so now since you got all of that kind of understood for the people who just want to leave go ahead and do it now let's just get straight into it so you're going to be down four mana every time you do this combo here so you're also going to be down 26 stamina so what does that mean that means that this is actually really really good for mana uh like preservation uh if you can uh preserve uh a good bit of mana that's what you kind of want to do however in order for you to go ahead and do this combo you need to burn 26 to 28 stamina which means you're actually going to be burning through a lot of stamina with this combo it takes 3.5 seconds and that's really important also so this means that every single time that you do this you're losing 26 to 28 stamina and keep in mind that all of this is going to be within berserker actually already proccing so like berserker is taken into account into all of these numbers that you're going to be seeing here so yeah this is really really important you're going to be down 19 mana for you doing this combo here l l r r tab every time you do this combo you're going to be down 19 mana so technically um this is it's actually pretty good in dps um because it's not like a super big drop in dps but it is a super big drop <laughs> nevertheless in dps nevertheless it's still pretty pretty good so uh the only problem that i have with this and this is the reason why i say this is not optimal i know a few people think that this is the best thing that you can do for donna and it's not because it costs the exact same amount of stamina that it takes to do the one that does much more damage and it takes 2.8 seconds to do which is actually not good because you actually need something that's a little bit more lengthy and i'll explain why that's actually important so you don't want to spam this as your optimal combo that is not optimal that is you if you do that you're not playing the character properly and you're actually losing more mana so it's just not efficient over time and it's not good dps either so don't do that but it is still good to fit in if you're trying to fit it in between a pattern and we'll talk about that in a little bit so uh what does this mean this means that if you do this combo here but you're at this smash so you're at the first smash in your l l l r r tab combo if you're at this smash if the first hit of that smash doesn't hit you're going to lose 42 mana if the first hit of this smash does hit you're going to lose 38 if both of those hits in this first smash hit you're going to lose 26 that's basically what that means and even though this right here this is not something you want to make uh, a habit of yours this is something that you only do if you're in a sticky situation because you have to if you're going to play donna properly you have to get to the last smash i mean the last attack in purify evil if you don't you're not playing the character properly now if you're in a sticky situation and you need a quick burst of stamina so that way you can have enough stamina to be able to defend yourself in an oko sequence which means a one hit ko or if you just need it for a specific uh tech pattern that you're about to do and you know how much stamina you need then sure go ahead and do it and or you know what if you're trying not to burn stamina after you do a curse breaker because remember what i talked about earlier this is one of those things that you actually can do in order to not use some stamina after that moment so that way you don't have to dodge you don't have to do anything you just get that free 45 stamina back and you get some uh dodge or stamina so you get actually 56 after you do that so that's actually a really really good way to get some stamina back right after you do a curse breaker that doesn't require for you to waste some stamina but the same problem is still there which is it doesn't have counter frame so it's not safe so you have to know that you can do that uh, and you're preparing for something so this is not something that you want to do willy-nilly this is something you only want to do if it's for a crunch time moment or something like that where you need to fit some dps in or you need to have some stamina to survive other than that you really never want to do that you always want to get to your last hit of your purified evil because this last one gives you 60 and if you look here the first attack gives you 23 mp but all of them give you if you hit all three it gives you 
81 MP, which is really important. And it puts you on a 55 second cooldown. But if you only get 45 stamina um, for the first time, and they put you on a 30 second cooldown, then that means you're only getting 90 stamina every 60 seconds, which is horrible because if you even just did two of these, you're on a 40 second cooldown and you get the exact same reward. So don't ever make this a habit. You always wanna do the full set of Purify Evil. So just save it to where you know you can pull it off and that will be the best thing for you to do. Okay, now this here, this is a complete like resource rotation. This is something that you only do, only do if you are trying to actually get some resources um, back into your arsenal. Um, now, even though it says you lose five to uh, seven stamina, you actually don't, you actually are gaining stamina uh, if you're doing something uh, that I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. So even though this says lose, uh, technically you really aren't if you play in the way that I'm gonna talk about in a bit. Now let's talk about this one here. So we already talked about it, but um, this is your optimal rotation. This is what you should be doing over and over and over again if you have the stamina to do so. Now with her, the way that her kit is right now, this is actually not sustainable. So you can't just spam this over and over again. So we'll talk about that in a bit. All right, so these here, um, all of these are pretty self-explanatory. Um, I won't go into depth into too much of it, but um, as you can see here, this is the same cost of that, except you waste more stamina. I mean, you waste more MP and you don't build as much SP. And then on top of that, your damage is lower. So this is not something you want to spam. Now, if you look at block LR tab, this is the exact same thing as this, all right? Um, but you took out this attack, all right? And it's the exact same stamina cost, which means you get less damage but you still have the same uh, stamina cost. And this is what I mean when I say, she doesn't get any reward for blocking. Same thing with this one. This is basically the exact same thing as this. And this is why I say, Donna, the stats don't tell the full story because if you go ahead and the boss is actually blocking you and you do an LLLRR tab, or in this case, LLRR tab, that is the exact same thing as this, but you're actually just losing more stamina. You get less damage and you get less SP, less MP, and the only thing you get is the fact that you actually blocked the boss. That's it. So this is actually something that you're going to be doing a lot more. So this is one of the more important ones because this is what's actually probably going to be happening a lot if you're going to be soloing. So keep this in mind that you're burning a lot of stamina if you do this. Um, you lose uh, 24 to 20 stamina if you do LLR tap, which means you're basically doing this uh, thing pretty much. Um, even though you aren't going to be losing as much stamina as um, you would with uh, the other stuff, it's still a pretty big cost in stamina. However, if you take out the tab in this, you actually are only going to be losing 14 to 18 uh, or 16 stamina or 12 to 16 stamina if you take out the tab because the tab requires for you to spend 10 stamina in order to do so. So if you can do block LLR and then block right after that, that's actually really, really good for MP and stamina. Um, so yeah, try that out. Uh, this one is self-explanatory. This one is self-explanatory. I will not be going over that. So, um, let's talk about this one. So if you go ahead and do your fickle fate, technically it's supposed to be giving you like 50 to 55 or something like that. I don't know the number exactly off the top of my head, but technically it's, it's supposed to be giving you around 50 to 55 stamina. However, you have to spend 10 stamina to block in order to do the space bar version, which is space tab RR, or you have to do it from fickle fate, which is neutral tab, which would be neutral tab RR. So you just did tab RR. So either way it goes, you are going to be spending 10 stamina to either pressure tab or to pressure space bar to do this, which means no matter how you look at it, you're going to be losing. You're going to only be getting 43 to 48 stamina because you're having to spend that 10 stamina. So this is not actually as good as you might think it is, but nevertheless, it's actually still good um, because it's giving you stamina back, which you need it for. So uh, what does this part here right uh, here means? So basically what this means is the moment that you press your right click and from neutral tab, so if you did fickle fate from neutral, you're gonna have a 10 second cooldown. However, it takes about 2.5 seconds to do it. So you actually don't have a 10 second cooldown. You have like an eight to 7.5 second cooldown because these are estimated times. Um, and I'm trying to take into account if you're not on 94 attack speed. <clears throat> so with that being said, you have an eight to 7.5 second cooldown. However, 
if you do it from spacebar which is space tab rr you have about a three second so you're dealing with about a seven to a 7.5 second cooldown before you can actually do this move again so what does this mean this means that technically if you do it right and you're playing good you could actually do two of these because it's 3.5 seconds so that's 3.5 3.5 that will be seven and then you could do this and, and since you would only be uh, doing this twice let's just take the lowest numbers for example because um, I'm trying to be generous here I'm trying to <laughs> give you some reason to play the character um, you basically you would be at 52 stamina uh, pretty much every single time you do this twice you would be losing that much stamina however you will be getting back 43 stamina every single time so you're actually losing nine stamina every 10 seconds that you would do this if you do two of these and one fickle fate from neutral now if you do it from space bar and the, the boss attacks you then same thing you're going to be getting exactly that much stamina back so with that being said you're you're losing technically um in order to do this combo of this twice into a fickle fate so two of these and then the fickle fate uh, what you're basically losing is you're losing 9 stamina and you're losing 78 MP because Fickle Fate is 70 MP and then again you're down 4 mana every time you do this combo. So that means you need exactly 78 MP and you need exactly 9 stamina to be able to go ahead and do this combo. Now what I mean by you'll need 9 is that's what you're going to be losing but technically you're going to be needing 50 six stamina uh technically somewhere around there even though you would you could pass with 52 i would say you will need 56 you'll need a technically 56 stamina in order to do this rotation so if you do not have 56 stamina you are going to be in a bind um so yes please do be careful uh this is going to be something that is going to be very very risky if you are not uh being mindful of your stamina so you anytime you're under like 70 stamina that's whenever you need to start actually fitting in resource rotations into your rotations so yeah um that's pretty much what all of that means and that will be your most optimal rotation that you could possibly do on donna with the way that she is right now there's nothing that you can do that will give you more dps over time than doing these two and then a fickle fate right after these two then doing a fickle fate right after literally if you look at it this is the highest damage that you can get uh, if nothing crit and this is the highest damage you can get if nothing crit so if you do those two right after each other you're going to be in a good spot and for people who are saying that neutral tab again i'm mid busting right now but people who say that neutral tab is a bad move and it's low dpm everything else in her kit is lower dpm except this move these are the only two moves that are worth doing in her kit and space tab is the same thing but remember this is requires for the boss to block you so you're losing more stamina for the space tab and um you actually get a little bit lower of a dps but it's not too much though it's literally the exact same thing it's like one number technically but it boosts a little bit whenever you get a crit so yeah um really not that big of a deal between these two so really doesn't matter but this and this these are your two best damage dealers on your kit and since this one gives you stamina to upkeep this one that is the most optimal rotation that you can do on Donald. two of these one of these two of these one of these if you do not do that you're losing dps um now again that's kind of go in depth here the problem with that is if you do this rotation over and over again you're going to be burning 78 mana every 10 seconds and you're going to be down nine stamina every 10 seconds so technically speaking you're going to actually be running out of mana first if you do this rotation now like i said the stats don't tell the full story because if you have to block the boss, now you're looking at, instead of you losing 9, you're looking at losing like 16 because you have to take into account Berserker. It would actually be 18, but 16 to 18 because of Berserker actually proccing in between that time. So you're actually now going to be losing 16 to 18 stamina every time you do that rotation if the boss attack you once in between it. And this is just once, okay? So let's say if the boss attack you a few more times in between it you're looking at much much more stamina cost so i will say this even though technically if the boss doesn't attack you will run out of mana first but if the boss is attacking you you're gonna run out of stamina first so you have to start adding in resource rotations into your thing 
Now, however, there is a way for you to actually take out the cost of your MP. Um, and it's with this here, your pin slash, your penitent slash. So if you go ahead and you think about it in that every 20 seconds, you can get two of these, one of these, two of these, one of these. If you look at it in that regard, then that means instead of you burning 78 stamina, uh, I mean 78 MP every uh, 10 seconds, uh, if you look at it in a 20 second format, that means you would actually be burning 156 uh, stamina, ev I mean uh, MP every uh, 20 seconds. However, if you go ahead and subtract 69 from that, that means you are actually be burning 87 uh, MP every 20 seconds. If you do this move every single time, it comes off a cooldown, which means this is actually something that you have to do in order to have optimal DPM or your resources for mana is just going to tank like crazy. Now, if you look down here, you can see that it gives you 81 MP, which is also really good. And it gives you a bunch of stamina right back. However, it's on a 55 second cooldown. So if you look at it in a one minute format, then you're gonna be looking at, yeah, no matter what you do, you're gonna be minus. You're always going to be losing stamina with this character, even if you do everything perfectly. And that's where Ritual of Ending really does come into play. Um, it gives you 193, that's really, really good. The only problem is the cooldown is ridiculous. Um, even though the cooldown is technically three minutes, I put two, uh, I subtracted two because that's how long it takes for you to do the attack. So, um, and then you get 90 MP from the one minute cooldown of the tornado. So MP is not going to be your problem. MP is really like the second thing that you worry about. You're always pretty much going to have MP if you're playing properly or if you're not wasting MP. Like for example, um, if you're building SP by dodging properly or using the correct things to play defense and you're not just wasting a bunch of MP with doing pointless curse breakers, then you really never really have to worry about MP because I'll go over that in a little bit. So yeah, um, MP is not going to be your problem. Stamina is. And so that's where we have to start talking about it. So if you are noticing that your stamina is under 70, that's whenever you have to add it in a resource rotation. You never actually do a resource rotation or a fickle fate if you actually don't need to. You only do that if you're trying to upkeep your stamina. And since you always do have to upkeep, that's the reason why it's built into the rotation, you know? But if there is a point in time where they make it to where you can like do like your dodge smash, let's say it gives you like 50 stamina or something like that, then just spam this over and over again. <laughs> you literally just do one dodge smash after it and just spam this over and over and over again. And that would be great DPS, but I don't know if a change like that would ever come. So yeah, I would recommend if you're going to do a resource rotation to only do it if you're under uh, 70 stamina and you realize you need it. Because what that's going to do is that's going to take away the 10 cost of the tab, but it's also going to take away the 60 MP cost of the curse breaker, which means you're actually building some SP. And since this is five to seven stamina, uh, that you're going to be losing for doing that that actually means that if you finish this you actually if you do it once and then do this one once that means you're actually going to be gaining some stamina back because now your stamina cost is going to be 26 plus 5 which means that's actually 31 so 43 minus 31 you get the picture you're actually gaining some stamina now if you were to do one of these and then one of these and then straight into your fifth plate again so it's basically like you're just getting the dodge uh, or to actually give you some stamina in that moment. Now, if a buff does come to the dodge smash, this actually will actually give you a bigger boost, which is actually going to be really important, which means this is going to be a combo that you can do for quite a long time, uh, depending on how her balance changes come around. Now, you're going to be losing a lot of DP DPS by doing this resource rotation, but nevertheless, like I said, if you have to stop attacking, you're going to have lower DPS anyway. However, there is another way to do this where you can still, again, you're, you're going to lose the MP, but your stamina won't be as big as of a problem. Um, and the way that I do it is, it's still going to be a problem, but it won't be as big of a problem as it would be if you did do no sort of resource management whatsoever, which is you do two of these. And after you do two of these, you do a dodge smash right after. So instead of this costing 52 stamina, it's actually going to cost you 40 stamina to do so so with that being the case of uh, 41 something like that that means you can do this and then your fickle fate is basically denying the cost of that so this is what i call an upkeep rotation that means that you're actually building just enough stamina to keep you in that same spot that you would be 
at if the boss never attacked you so what does that mean that means if you do one of these one of these and then you do your dodge smash right after that and then you do your fickle fate right after that because this is the tech that i wanted to tell you about if you do a dodge smash and you move forward just a little bit just a little bit it actually makes it to where you can actually animation cancel your dodge smash with fickle fate which means you can do dodge smash immediately into a fickle fate which means you don't have to do this dodge tab so that means you can actually just go straight into the thing and you're not burning 21 stamina uh so that means you aren't getting 30 you're actually getting this 43 which means that you're basically completely nullifying the cost of doing um two of these into uh one of these it's basically it's free instead of you losing nine stamina every time you're actually not losing anything technically you're like gaining one stamina if you do it like that which means it's completely doable if the boss never attacks you now however that's like a, a he say uh that's like not a he say what am i saying uh that's like a very not realistic scenario so again even though technically this would be good you're still going to have to block the boss eventually so you're going to have to deal with blocking which is where your stamina cost tanks from and other things alongside of that so that being said you're still going to be minus in stamina every single time that you do anything solo with this character so um nevertheless that's pretty much how you would go about it that is the rotation that i would recommend for you if you are looking to play donna in the most optimal way and upkeep your dps and have some room to be able to do whatever you want to do uh, in between the boss's patterns because this means that you can actually do this over and over again and it doesn't cost you anything and technically you aren't really losing any stamina you're actually gaining a good bit of stamina um from it and you're actually getting some pretty pretty good dps this is actually what i have found to be the best like hybrid of like dps and then actual resource uh involved in it this is what I found to be the best hybrid. You do about 320k damage if nothing would crit. If you did that rotation, and if you look at it in a 20 second format, you would actually be doing about 790k damage if nothing crit every 20 seconds by adding in the pin slash uh, every single time it's off a of cooldown. So that's actually a really good rotation. Even though it's not great damage, he's not like blowing anybody through the roof with damage numbers or anything like that. But nevertheless, it's still good DPS for what it is. So with all of that being said, that's pretty much everything that I have to talk about with this here. So now let's move on into the second part of this, which is um, like the defensive mechanics. Uh, first, let's start off with that. So your light attack, the first light attack that you have, it's going to do this much damage. Uh, if you add this total up with this total up, that's going to be 8189 which means that it's really not a lot of DPS. And if you look at a dodge smash, this is more DPS than this. And remember, a light can't crit. So if a light can't crit, then that means it's always going to be exactly what it is. If this crits, you're getting a lot of damage. If this crits, you're getting more damage than both of those combined together, right? So um, then if you look at it from the format of, uh, your, let's say if you blocked and you did your light, right? And then you did your second light, that's going to give you about uh, somewhere around like 10 point something uh k damage that's really not a lot either because again if this crits you're going to be good these can't crit if this crits you're going to be golden if this hits you're going to be golden it's always going to give you more damage now let's say you did light 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 you did all three of them that's going to give you about 14.5 k damage this you're only losing about 900 to uh, well, 1k damage if you did a dodge smash and remember that can never crit if this crits you're going to have more damage in the future this is a higher dpm move and same thing with this one um even though technically this would uh be lower dps than doing three lights um this can lead into fickle fate which would lead into these things which is extremely better at doing dps so that's why i say um even if you're like playing uh like donna if you you know for a fact that you're gonna be doing like light 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 block light 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 don't even do it just dodge smash or do space tab to get into a fickle fate moment where you can get that higher dps or do dodge smash and then block and then go straight into your combo or do dodge smash and then dodge smash and dodge smash because that's always going to give you more damage than doing three of your light attacks 
because you get nothing from that and you have no chance of critting it this crits once you just broke the roof of how much damage you've done to the boss so three light attacks they're really really trash so your smash it's where all of your damage is at uh with her and this is proof here that if you did dodge light i mean or block light block light and the boss attack you number one you're burning a lot more stamina but this is lower a lower number than this which means this will always give you less dps than this and this will never crit but this could crit and if it crits it's really 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 good now let's say you get both of these that's going to be around 10 to 11 uh something around there uh k damage that's about the exact same thing as this if this crits so it's not a huge drop if you do this so that means if you some people are like yeah but you know it's it you know your, your backflip it takes a little bit of time to do whatever it doesn't really matter both of these light attacks would not give you what this does if it crits so this is a better way to do it now if you don't even want to think about crits then you can just simply block and then um do your dodge smash or if you know for example the boss is about to bring another attack in your face or you just go straight into fickle fate if you have to the whole thing of like blocking light blocking like that is not optimal unless you can guarantee for a fact that you will hit this r this is horrible look at this this is horrible dps pretty much everything else in your kit does more damage than this except you getting to this one smash and that's if it doesn't crit if it does crit look at the damage right so this is it's literally the the worst dps that you can do so the only time you actually want to go out and go crazy with block uh like tab so basically block light and then going into your curse breaker is if you can guarantee your smash you can't guarantee the smash and this is horrible dps as you can see here it's even worse dps than if you were to just do ll and then animation council the uh smash into tab because this is more dps but notice the numbers of this and this compared to everything else in your kit so that is not something that you want to you, you don't want to spam this this is not good you do not want to be always relying on your lights because your lights is low dps your block l tab that's low dps even this, this is still low dps for what it is if you can do block r all right which is basically a uh, block and then you do this light and then you do your r you're basically right here right if you go and ahead and you do that and you're doing tab if you would actually block or if you can get one of these in which means you can hit this and let's say it crit that's you're literally not even losing anything at that point because then you're around here so just know that you really like don't really have to worry about like doing like curse breakers curse breakers are only good if they can be followed up after a smash attack if you can't follow it up after a smash attack it's not good so um that's pretty much how that works so i hope that all of this is making sense i'm trying not to go too crazy about it because i don't want to tell people how to play a character because there are instances where you actually need to do this in order to have optimal dpm but like i said if you cannot guarantee that this r is going to hit the boss i would not even recommend doing it i would recommend actually just doing lr or just a uh, block l or just do block space i'm not blocking uh, l i would just recommend you just doing like this if you cannot guarantee that that r is going to hit i would not even like go crazy i would just block all right and then just do your space uh fickle fate but if that's on cooldown, then sure enough, go for it. However, you're just going to be burning through MP. Or you can just block, then do your light attack. Uh, and if you, again, like I said, you can't do another one in between. Just do another block if you have to. Uh, and then go immediately into your next combo. That would be better than to sit there and spam low DPM moves. However, this would give you more DPS if you actually can't fit anything in between it. So that's what I mean when I say it's still good. It's just compared to everything else, it's not something you want to spam. Only really do it if you know for a fact that you can get that right out. If you know you can't and you know the pattern that's coming, then don't do this. Do this. But if you know you can't fit this in, then try to reposition or something like that. So that's pretty much how that works. Um, and as you can see here, uh, if this neutral tap crits, with this low, this is not really great stats, but if this crits, that is 
huge damage numbers. That is huge, 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 huge. Um, that is basically the exact same damage. This one hit, that's the exact same damage of a full combo of this, if nothing crit. So this is really, really, really good. And if nothing crit on it, it's really, really good. So one thing that you could do in order to kind of make this uh, viable is um, after you do your neutral tap, you can always do a dodge smash after that to kind of take up the account of this. If you are looking to like kind of keep this because that will be the exact same amount of time since this takes about one second to do. Uh, and this is 13 and this will be 91. You're looking at about um, 103 or 104 uh point something 104.7 something around there uh damage uh that's really really close to this so basically people who think that neutral tab is a low dpm move it's actually really really good and if you pair it up with this if this doesn't crit and if this doesn't crit it does the exact same damage now if this crits and this crits as you can see it's really really nice it's the exact same damage so just know that neutral tab followed after a dodge smash is the exact same amount of damage that you would have gotten from doing this and the good thing about neutral tab is you're completely safe and you have a block frame which means you can actually do around the same exact exact damage from doing this uh really risky move that has no like no timing in between you have to like actually know that you can pull this off in order to get that damage right but you can do neutral tab whenever you want to if it's off of cooldown and you can follow it up with another iframe after you just did all of these iframes or you can do space tab or, or do this and you can follow it up with a dodge smash to get the exact same damage as this if both of them crit so it's around the same damage literally you're only losing like 3k damage something a lot around there um or 2k damage something around there so know that don't be afraid to do neutral tap into dodge smash that's actually really really high dps for donna and that's pretty much everything that i really want to say about donna uh for the way that she feels right now um things might change it it'll be whatever it'll be and then uh i'll just go really quickly pin slash uh penitent slash is really really good dps if you throw that move out the moment it's off a of cooldown that is going to give you a huge dps boost because that is the exact same thing as doing llrr all right that is the exact same thing as doing that attack so and that is if it never crits if this all of that crits your ll and both of your uh smashes crit i mean all three th these two and this one if all of those crit you're still going to do less dps if this one attack crit so this is a really good move to throw in right after you do your curse breaker and that's going to boost your dps numbers again tornado is something that you want to do every single time that you need the mp or if it's off a of cooldown and you again like i said if you're doing the optimal rotations you're going to be needing it anyway so this is actually really good dps you want to throw it every single time it's off of that one minute cooldown this you don't ever want to do it for dps it's only there for the fact that you need stamina if donna ever becomes a character where you don't actually need to worry about stamina so much you pretty much will never do this because the, the damage is trash anyway it takes too long to do and it's just really not all that but the stamina is needed for her kit ritual of ending is also really really good it's mainly there for the uh damage that you get that's a huge amount of damage right that's the exact same thing if as if all of this crit or if all of this like pretty much crit for the for the most part right uh except the last hit so this is a really really good move this is basically like a free like five seconds of damage if it didn't crit and if uh if everything crit so this is really really good you want to pop this the moment that it's off of cooldown all right well thank you guys for watching this video so much i appreciate it i thank you guys for tuning in and hearing what i have to say and uh thank you guys like comment subscribe do whatever you want to do share it i recommend uh if you know someone who would like to watch or someone who wants some help with donna go ahead and link on my video if you feel the need to do so other than that see you guys peace out see you in the next one